I'd like to begin with a description of my life 25 years ago. I'm 13 years old and my father is injured in a car accident. His doctor gives him pain pills. And my father is a recovering addict and he has not consumed alcohol for almost my entire life. And soon the pills are gone and my father is desperate for more pills and it's Christmas Eve and my father consumes alcohol. And I've never seen him this way. And I hear smashing sounds and my mother is screaming and my father is screaming and I'm scared and I don't understand. And everything is fine. Our family is fine and we are fine. And that is a lie. And I'm 14 years old and my father consumes alcohol and I visit him in rehabs. And he does not drink for a while and then he drinks and he takes painkillers. And I'm 15 years old and my father consumes alcohol. And I visit him in detox units and he does not drink for a while and then he drinks and he takes painkillers. And I'm 16 years old and my father consumes alcohol and I visit him in psychiatric units and think, because things are getting worse. And I think he drinks when he can't find more painkillers. And I'm 17 years old. My father consumes alcohol and I attend AA meetings with him and he does not drink for a while. And then he drinks and he takes painkillers and everything is fine. Our family is fine and we are fine. And that is a lie. And I'm leaving for college soon. And my mother is secretly saving money and she has a plan. And I'm 18 years old and I leave for college and my mother kicks my father out and he lives in a halfway house for recovering addicts and he isn't even close to halfway. And in my freshman year of college, the phone rings and my roommate answers and he comes to get me and he says, your mom called and you need to call her back right away. And I say, thank you. And he waits and he waits because he needs to bring me to the phone. And now I know it's bad. And we walk back to the dorm in silence. And my mother answers the phone and she says, you need to sit down, John. Are you sitting down? Please sit down. And I'm crying and she is crying. And now it's all over. And at the funeral, people ask questions and we give answers. And we can't believe my father's heart gave out. And he had heart problems. And we never saw it coming. And at least he died at home. And everything is fine. Our family is fine. And we are fine. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a lie. Hey everybody, I'm John Strasser and I I personally understand change. Although my dad was never capable of changing, I was. I've spent time in jails, in psychiatric units. I lived in homeless shelters once for several months. I didn't file my taxes for 11 years. My family, both my parents died young. My mother alone in a hospital because I was too intoxicated to be there. I was a completely selfish and dishonest person. But six years ago, I completed rehab at a Salvation Army. And since then, I've embarked on a whole new life. Uh, two years ago at age 36, I earned a bachelor's degree. I, I, I won seven scholarships and graduated with a 4.0 before being accepted here to Columbia University for graduate study. I've developed within me a passion to, for sharing my experiences with others, currently at Rikers Island Prison Complex and in a psychiatric unit at Bellevue Hospital. But the real recovery for me has has been not just over the adversities I've faced, but rather from the familial environment in which I was raised, where I learned to be dishonest. And the greatest lie I ever told, I told myself. That is, I cannot change. We all have parts of our lives that we would like to change, right? Or we know people who we are hoping will change, or we are desperately trying to change someone but he or she will not. If only my fiance, here she is, honey, if only you would finally realize that I'm not interested in watching Grey's Anatomy, okay? She loves this Dr. McDreamy guy, but to me, he sounds like a a dessert from McDonald's. Today, I'm here to offer myself as an example that people can and do change, so that's what I'll discuss first. Then I'm gonna talk about how to change, and finally, I will describe how to stay changed. I hope you guys brought your piggy banks because that's a lot of change. All right, that was dumb. You know, I used to think that, that nobody, I used to think that nobody changes because nobody I knew ever did, but now I know it's possible. I'm an alumnus from the University of South Florida and here working towards a master's degree, but the most important diploma I own is the one I received from the Salvation Army. And that's where I spent six months and that's where I drastically changed. Because prior to that, I made a great deal of poor decisions and I got myself in a lot of trouble. 
For example, I was living in St. Petersburg Beach, Florida, working in a restaurant. And at that, at that point in my life, I was felt hopeless. I felt lonely. I had no education, no future. I hated my life. I hated my job. And every night after work, I would drink alcohol. This one particular night after the bar closed, I was hungry, and so I went to the 24-hour 7-Eleven convenience store, and I bought my usual, hot dogs with chili and cheese. Then I went home. Next night, same thing. I got drunk. I got hungry. I went back to the 7-Eleven. This time, as soon as I walked in, the manager, she screamed, here he is. Here's the guy that was in here last night. I said, I said what, 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 what did I do? She said, you were in here last night and you made a mess of the chili and cheese machine. I said, I, I, I did? She said, yes, you did. You left chili and cheese all over the counter. I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, 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 I didn't know, I don't remember. I, I just, I, may I please have more hot dogs? And at 7-Eleven, they have control of the hot dogs. They have to hand them to you. You know, I hate that. But I was determined to not get in trouble. And so I went up to the chili and cheese machine and I slowly pressed on the chili button and it went and it shot out all over my pants. I turned to her, I said, this is ridiculous. This is a faulty chili and cheese machine. This is not my fault. She screamed at me. I screamed at her. She said, I'm calling the police. I said, call them. I went outside and immediately the police showed up. One of them said to me, sir, step out to the sidewalk. We're issuing you a trespass warning. I said, what about my car? Because my car was right there. And then this lady, the manager, she said, I'm having your car towed. I said, oh no, this, she's crazy. And then the cop, he said, listen, son. He said, do not come back tonight. If you come back, you will be arrested. I said, okay, okay, okay. And so I, I, I walked down the street and I waited a little while till I thought the coast was clear. And I ran back to my car I jumped in, I took off, and I was arrested. And, uh, and I was charged with trespassing and DWI. And what a bad decision that was. I mean, back then, my life was a series of bad decisions. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I just, my life was a series of bad decisions leading me to live the life that I lived, you know? Most people, when the cops said, do not come back tonight, if you come back, you'll be arrested, most people don't go back. You know, you guys don't go back. But I went back. I always went back. And I was never capable of, of being honest enough with myself to believe that I could be different, that I could change. And so the idea then is that in order to change, I had to believe differently. And it first began with a decision. So that's how I changed. I made a decision to change and then I followed through with action. And as I took action, my belief in my ability to change expanded. And as I continued to believe eventually, or I began to achieve. And that formula has worked perfectly for me every time. Now, I love hot dogs, right? And, uh, and this, uh, this entire talk so far, it seems like it's been about hot dogs. I mean, I was, I was thinking to myself, you know, TEDx is about ideas worth spreading. And so in preparation, I was thinking, you know, I've got to come up with something worth spreading. What's worth spreading? What's worth spreading? Sweet relish is worth spreading, mustard and ketchup. But in the Salvation Army, we were given jobs. Initially, I worked in the kitchen and that was a good job, but I made the decision to obtain the best job. And in there, we had a small store, a canteen. And so I decided for my job, I would become the canteen guy. I, the action, I worked hard in the kitchen. I developed a relationship with the guy that could give me the job. As time passed, I began to believe that I was next in line for the job until finally I fully believed. And then what do you know? The current canteen guy graduated. I achieved my dream, albeit absurd, making, putting me in total control of the entire supply of hot dogs. <laughs> and I, I, need to, I need to tell you too that, uh, that being the, the canteen guy was not easy. I mean, those guys in the Salvation Army, yeah, they were tough. You know, they would, they would come up to me and say, hey man, let me get a hot dog today and I'll pay you tomorrow. And I, I didn't know what to do. So I made another decision. I just, this is ridiculous. I know it is. So I made another decision. I decided I would learn to be honest and to, and to not offer any further explanation. And so they would say, hey, canteen guy. Hey man, let me get a, let me get a hot dog. Let me get one. And I would say, no. 
And then they, they couldn't believe it. I mean, they're like, they just, hey, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? No. So I learned early on that in order to change, I only have to make a decision. You know, this is what I want, and I'm willing to do anything to get it. And what a difference. I mean, it used to be, this is what I want, and I'm going to come up with a massive number of reasons as to why I can't have it. And, you know, I don't think you're going to hear about hot dogs from the rest of the speakers today. I hope not. But for me, the hot dog is actually a metaphor for choice. And choice is what we all have each day. We have the choice to change. We also have the choice to seek the life we desire and to do so with courage, disregarding conventional expectations. And that is one way that I have found to remain changed. And so at the University of Florida in the beginning, amid a world religions course, I felt deeply inspired to pursue a religion degree. So I made the decision to go for it. I changed my major. And then people would ask, you know, what are you going to do with a religion degree? And I would say, you know, I, I don't know, I guess be religious. But in reality, be content with the decision to study what I choose. Later, I traveled to South Asia and I fell in love with India. And so I made another decision. I would live in India while completing my bachelor's degree. Two years ago, my fiance, Brittany and I, we moved to New Delhi, India to study world religions. And people would ask, you know, what are you guys going to do in India? And I would say, <laughs> I don't know, we're going to do our best. You know, but in reality, be content with the decision to live where we choose. And along the way, I made the decision to attend Columbia University. And with that, my, my belief grew to such an extent that never once did I consider applying to another school. I, I, I created no backup plan because plan B only distracts from plan A. And here I am. And so one way that I have found to remain changed is by learning to think big and to act with courage. Because when we're going forward with such intensity, there's no going back. It's impossible, you know? And I never believed that I could change, but I did. Change comes when we believe it's possible. And there's something magical about belief that as we believe in something, our desire for it increases. And that's been my experience. I only wanted to change my disastrous ways, but as my belief grew, so too did my desire to change. You know, it transcended serving hot dogs at the Salvation Army or earning just a bachelor's degree or even living only in the United States. We all have the opportunity today to be different, to live differently, to choose a different path. Remember, we make a decision. In what ways would we like our life to be different? We act. What can we do today toward our goals for tomorrow? And we believe. And as we continue to believe, eventually we achieve. It's easy. Life is easy. Believe that. And be grateful for what you have, but be even more grateful for what you have yet to receive. I love this. I love speaking. I love learning. I love life. I love being an example of the power of belief. And if through this process, I have learned to live unconventionally, to think big, to act with courage, to be honest with myself, to take myself less seriously, right? And to change. It was because I was left with nothing. And so I was left with nothing to lose. And desperation is a disguised blessing only revealed in the pursuit for something more, for relief, for love. And as we traverse this wondrous, mysterious life, may we all have nothing to lose. Thank you so much. <laughs>